Hello, everybody. Well, I did have a uh, blogger, a uh, subscriber, ask me a while back, are you going to do a show on recruiting on National Signing Day? Well, he's going to get his wish because this is the first time in the many years that I have done Sooner blogs, as the OU Sooner 56, that I have done a show about Oklahoma National Signing Day, recruiting in other words. And entering today, February the 3rd, National Signing Day, all of the Sooners' verbal commitments have signed. Okay, All of the ones who said that they were definitely committing to Oklahoma have signed the dotted line and are officially Sooners as a result of their national letter of intent. Now, this past weekend, uh, one of their biggest names did sign on the dotted line today, Mark Jackson, a defensive end out of Texas, whom at this time last year had Texas on his mind. Texas A&M was his choice verbally as of last May, then this past weekend, visited Norman, loved what he saw as far as the football program, but also, too, as a student, he really liked what he could do at the University of Oklahoma, so... The Sooners got a verbal commitment from him on uh, Monday, decommitting from Texas A&M. So Mark Jackson, a 6'3", 235-pound defensive end, fulfilling a big need there. Because remember, you had Eric Stryker, um, who's run out of eligibility. He was listed as a linebacker, but of course Stryker would at times be lined up as a defensive end in order to put pressure on the quarterback. Mark Jackson could be that same type of player. Speaking of defensive ends for the Sooners, um, Amane Bledsoe, um, Amane Bledsoe out of uh, Lawrence, Kansas. He also signs on the dotted line for Oklahoma, 6'5", 272. He was a verbal commitment a couple of weeks ago. Guy I'm really excited about, probably the guy I'm excited about the most as far as the defensive 2016 class for the Sooners, Jordan Parker. And this guy's out of Pittsburgh, California, um, 5'11", 184. Some people compare him to Daryl Rivas, you know, We'll wait and see about that. You know, Rivas an all-pro defensive back in the NFL uh, for, for so many years. Uh, Parker, um, I've heard he's 5'11". You know, I've even heard that he's 6'1". Um, I guess you can say he's six foot if you call up the averages. But uh, Jordan Parker, guy who will really stick to you. And, again, the Sooners land him out of the state of California. Now, speaking of California, one guy that the Sooners thought that they had in their grasp um, – is uh, Bryce uh, Youngquist, but because of personal reasons and why I've heard health issues, his family says that he's not going to college this next year. Um, that's why there, there was no signing for him um, on this very day. The Sooners already knew that, I believe, before signing day. So uh, Bryce Youngquist not signing because of personal reasons, and for right now, he's got some personal issues to uh, fix. Um, linebacking, this is a big issue for the Sooners because – Five of their top six linebackers uh, from this past season, not back, okay? Either because they've run out of eligibility or because they left early, like Dominic Alexander. But, of course, you mentioned Eric Stryker. You're not going to have him, nor Devontae Bond, nor P.L. Lindley, nor Frank Shannon. So, again, five of your top six linebackers are gone. Major need that the Sooners have to fulfill. And it looks like so far uh, this class has done that in the form of, um, you know, John Michael Terry. Um, out of Tulsa, uh, Victory Christian, I believe, uh, 6'3 at 230. Um, should be able to help them right away. And the Sooners also really went to the route of um, Scranton, Pennsylvania uh, to get another linebacker. That's Emmanuel Beal, um, Capri uh, Dosit. They get him to another linebacker. And an offensive lineman out of Scranton, PA, uh, 6'8, 330 from the Juco ranks. And that is uh, Ashton uh, Julius. Does not look 330. Uh, pretty tall. Kind of a lean 330. But he could pretty well fit into that rotation um, immediately. So you have Ashton Julius, offensive lineman from Scranton, PA. Um, now before we get into the rest of the offensive uh, recruits of note. Remember, I'm not going to go over every single name on the recruiting list. Just um, many of them. Many of what I feel are the bigger names on the list for the Sooners that they got to sign National Letters of Intent. Before I get to the offensive side, there were some misses for Oklahoma in terms of players uh, that had not yet verbal committed or at one point had, but on signing day was uncertain. Of course, Chris Daniels was one of them. Um, he had committed to Oklahoma, then uh, decommitted, didn't know where he was going to go. Both Chris Daniels and Marcel uh, Southall, both defensive linemen out of uh, Texas, 
both commit to the University of Texas. The Longhorns, by the way, had a big recruiting day for uh, Charlie Strong. Um, speaking of defense, Jared Maiden, another guy that the Sooners thought they had a real big shot at getting. He commits to uh, Alabama out of uh, Sash, Texas. And I have not heard anything about Riley Cole. I've been trying to find out about Riley Cole, um, another linebacker. You can't have too many linebackers if you're the Sooners, especially from this class, 6'3", 217, um, out of Alabama. I have not heard yet if he has committed Riley Cole, who was a one-time Alabama commit but had decommitted. I still have not been able to find out um, if and who he has signed with. The biggest name is still out there for Oklahoma as far as a five-star recruit. Okay, and I believe he's the last five-star recruit nationwide that has not signed yet. That's Caleb Kelly, um, an outside linebacker who would be a big addition if he can come to Oklahoma. 6'3", 214, um, out of Fresno. I believe he played at a high school called Clovis West in California. Um, it's come down to three schools for him, the Sooners, Oregon, and Notre Dame. He's supposed to announce at 7.30 Oklahoma time, Wednesday night, February 3rd, where he's going. I'll put an annotation um, on this video as uh, soon as uh, we find out uh, who he's going to commit to. And if Oklahoma can land him, that would really upgrade that linebacker core because Caleb Kelly, I think, would start right away. I think he's that good of a player. But again, he has uh, yet to sign um, at all. He's supposed to make an announcement at some elementary school. Um, there um, in his home grounds. Let's talk about offense for the uh, Sooners. Quarterback, of course, you know there's no Trevor Knight. He went to Texas A&M. Cody Thomas, for the time being, um, is fully focused on baseball. So all of a sudden, Sooners, um, even though Kyler Murray from Texas A&M is coming to Oklahoma, can't use him this next year because he has to sit out um, because of the transfer rule. So, you know, Hopefully, Baker Mayfield won't get hurt, but if he does, you're going to have to have somebody to step in there. Austin Kendall out of um, Wax Hacks, North Carolina, um, a guy that has, you know, basically been in Oklahoma's pocket since April. Um, you'll have him, four star recruit, 6'2 uh, and uh, 210, strong arm, um, a guy that's not extremely mobile, but has played in a system just like Lincoln Riley's since his freshman year of high school. So the transition from him may not be as big of one as you might think. So you have Austin Kendall. Speaking of North Carolina, Durham, North Carolina, at running back, you have Abdul Adams. Got to remember that, you know, Samaj P. Ryan, um, this will be his third year coming up. And Joe Mixon, even though it will be his second year coming up, keep in mind, of course, he didn't play his freshman year because he was suspended. So he's been with the program three years. You could lose both to the NFL after this next year. So, you know, Abdul Adams, um, you know, could be called upon some reserve duty pretty early. We'll see if that happens or if they register him. But you have him. And offensive line, a huge need for uh, Oklahoma. I'd probably say offensive line, linebacker, and wideouts, who we'll talk about in a second, are the three biggest needs for the Sooners. Um, but you have Eric Swenson, 6'5", 300, um, out of uh, Illinois from a town called Downers Grove. Um, he was a verbal commitment as of this past Sunday, just recently. So you have um, him, he's signed the dotted line, along with another offensive lineman, John Carlo Valentin, uh, 6'5", um, out of uh, Philadelphia. He was a verbal commitment a, a few weeks ago, but he's officially signed. And we already mentioned um, Ashton Julius, uh, 6'8", 330 from the JUCO ranks, um, also um, out of Pennsylvania from Scranton. Wide receivers, let's talk about them while we have the chance. Uh, Mikael Jones at six foot even, 180 um, from Patterson, Louisiana. Look, um, you lose your top two receivers, you know, if you're the Sooners. You know, Sterling Shepard, who set school records, and you also lose uh, Deron Neal as well. So, Mikael Jones uh, could very well fit into that rotation, as well as uh, Zach Farrar at 6'3", a tall target, and 210 pounds um, from Texas out of Southland. This class, and before I go any further, unlike a lot of Sooner classes in the past, especially under Bob Stoops, this one did not have a lot of Texas commits on it. Didn't have very many at all. Probably the fewest that we've seen in quite a while. All-around athlete, speaking of Texas, out of Houston, um, Adrian uh, Hardy, 6'2", 185, a diverse, uh, a diverse player. You'll, you'll have him at your disposal. So the Sooners class, I would say solid, okay? 
Was it great? Well, according to Rivals.com, not as great as the typical usual suspects, you know, the players, you know, that, you know, the, the, the top in the country that generally go to LSU, Ole Miss, Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan, Notre Dame, um, you know, Auburn. That hasn't changed, okay? And again, Texas uh, made a late push today to have a top 10 class. Them, and I'll probably say Baylor and TCU were the top three, but the Sooners a close fourth now. If Caleb Kelly does sign, that will elevate the, the Sooners' overall class. Keep in mind that these ratings, according to rivals, they're not scientific, and sometimes you might have a two- or a three-star player end up being All-American, and sometimes the five-star players don't mean jack. But you do notice that typically when rivals and these sources like Scout and ESPN rate a player so high, they're consistent, Okay. I mean, the, the teams that generally have the highest recruiting classes are the ones that generally are national championship contenders, okay? We like to say it's all coaching, but we're not idiots as fans. We know that you've got to have talent, and those schools get the talent. And Oklahoma used to get those top 10 recruiting classes. It's still probably going to be a top 20 class, and if Caleb Kelly signs, and again, I'll have that annotation tonight um, on his decision, then um, it'll, it'll elevate certainly, but, but the Sooners, you know, it's, it's still a good class, okay? It's not top 10, but it's still good. And they did fulfill the three biggest needs, offensive line, wide receiver, and linebacker, and whether they get Caleb Kelly or not. So good job by the Sooners. 